thinking about stuff, relax. But just like with anything out there, with alcohol, alcohol is legal, but you can overuse it and you can get your, you know, get an alcohol poison, you can get a DUI. So there's going to be people out there who are going to abuse marijuana, but overall, yeah, it should be decriminalized. We shouldn't have people in jail for a plant like that that sure. has so many positive uses. But then I get criticized for not just saying it's God and let's, you know, instead of Mount Rushmore having George Washington, a marijuana leaf. Yeah. There's that whole moment where it's just weed, 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 weed. And uh, it's just got to kind of get sick of it. I mean, I, like, like I said, I think there's some good uses out there, but in moderation, definitely. Well, I, I just know this. Thank God you're not smoking that devil plant. <laughs> no, I've admitted to it. Uh, it's just, have you ever smoked pot that knocks you on your butt? It all does for me. It doesn't matter what kind it is. That's why I know my limit. If, if I do, it's literally those times at night if I wake up having those nightmares from combat, whatever it may be. That'll help me get back to sleep. Forget about it. My mind's clear. I wake up the next day rested. I feel good to go. So you do use right it medically? Um, I mean, I'm not prescribed it, but I mean, I definitely use it for a medical reason. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. do it for fun. I'm not out every day doing that. It's maybe once every couple months because every once couple months I might have one of these uh, episodes where I just get stressed out. Everything hits me from combat. Something happens. I, it just hits me and that will ease me down, get me oh. back at ground zero again and I'm ready to go. Well, total truthfulness here at InfoWars, teleprompter free. That's why this broadcast, the Mountain News, is going to be a big hit. And we want to be a big hit to stop tyranny, not to be a big hit so we're a big hit on TV. Yeah. I mean, this is the excitement of being real, folks. That was a good question. I want to get to Trump. Uh, we've got uh, Martin folks have been holding, but I'm going to get to them in the next segment. We've got to get to the Trump situation. So you're up there for Lord Trumpus. What happened? I went in there with an open mind, you know? He says a lot of good things out there. You know, he, he's definitely a crowd pleaser. And I wrote down on this piece of paper that he was lackluster. He's lackluster in the sense that he's not motivated or convicted in a sense when it comes to the issues at hand. Issues that a presidential candidate should be, con you know, have conviction in, have knowledge in. When he's asked certain questions about these issues, he doesn't have a really good answer. He doesn't know what he's doing. He kind of reminded me of Rodney Dangerfield with these one-liners. Like, hey, we got a border problem, huh? What are we going to do about it? Let's build a wall. All right, so what is a wall going to do? All he does is he brings problems to the table without a solution. And that's what I heard last night. A whole lot of problems being brought to the table without him giving any kind of clear path to how he was going to well, give a solution to these issues. We know a wall won't work contiguously. What really works is prosecuting people that hire illegals. Well, yeah. I mean, when I was down in Hereford, Arizona, for example, at Glenn Spencer's, we were walking up and down through the border there, and you could see where they pulled out acetylene gas torches, cut the fence down, the cartels drove over those fences to the road, made their drops, came back, hooked it to a winch, pulled the fence back up, and then welded it all the way back up. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and the, the Border Patrol is the one that goes out there and marks it. On this day, April 15th, 2015, the cartel came through here and cut this, and they'll mark it, and they highlight it. And you can see that when you drive down that border. So all you're going to do is spend all this money on this giant fence. It's going to get cut down. It's going to get dug a hole under it because that's how all Chapo got out. That's how all these different people move cocaine shipments underground through tunnels and water. You got a guy driving motorcycles, a cartel guy, through a tunnel out of prison. Anything that has a wall, you can get under it. And, sure and enough, making it illegal makes the price go up. Just like with marijuana. So we decriminalize all that stuff. We stop... We, we look at how we're dealing with immigration and we actually get to it. You know, Donald Trump said in two years, he's going to have every illegal out of the country. The only way you could do that, it was just like I was talking to McAuliffe Allen back there. It would be like Nazi Germany. They're going to have to go door to door and find out, are, are, are you an American? I need to see proof. And that's what's going to happen. That's the only way you're going to get all the illegals out. But then at the same time, you still have illegals in the country who want to do good. And, what and we're not even is, saying, all we're saying is don't say free welfare, free babies, come here and have the Democrats sign them up to anti-gun groups well, and give them fake voting cards. Well, a lot of them are brought in and then just let loose. What we have to do is get these people on the right track to the right source of legal immigration, get them in the right steps they need to take to become an American citizen. Sure. Like I had a lot of buddies who joined the military so they become American citizens. So they take that as a spit in the face when all these people are allowed to come over no. and they're given better health care, better education, better financial situations than these guys who are over here the proper way, doing it the right way like everyone else. Let's get into more of Trump. Um, I mean, I saw a lot of articles saying thousands line up to see Trump. InfoWars reports from Texas campaign. Uh, Wall Street's latest panic. Trump could win. We're not even critics of Trump here. I mean, Joe just wanted to see what he was really like. 
Um, yeah, but a lot of it is like a Roddy Dangerfield uh, one-liner. Um, why do folks like him so much then? He's a crowd pleaser. He definitely knows how to work a crowd, and that's what he was doing. He didn't have the first thing he talked about when he showed up, hey, this is teleprompter free. We don't have any. And he rambled on about how he made $215 million on The Apprentice. It took 30 minutes before he even named an issue. And when he did, he talked about this vague tax plan that he had and that that in a few weeks he's going to release this, you know. Sure, plan. he appealed like a carnival barker to but, success. But everyone was in there screaming and yelling, women crying, babies screaming, signs flying up through the air. I mean, Well, that just shows how desperate people are. It, it was and they take his confidence and they believe that he'll, 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 I mean, if you said, look, I've made money at all these different ventures and I want to get America great again and I want to cut taxes and I want to do this and that, then it'd be good to brag for maybe a minute or two about your accomplishments because yeah. it's good to do that. You know, one of my accomplishments earlier I was saying was not selling out and, and covering up 9-11. Um, I see that as an accomplishment. Trump, I guess, probably wouldn't. But, I mean, owning a casino and, and fleeing schmucks, I don't think that was a success. Yeah. Well, I, I, had, I definitely had an agenda when I went up there as well. I wore my Hillary for a Prison 2016 t-shirt under my suit. By the way, that's a bestseller. We have photos, or at least you sent me those photos, Joe. Yeah, yeah, they, they should be all on my Twitter right now as well. And I have footage of myself. I'm in the front row. I snuck up to the front row, and I'm sitting there. I'm kind of getting nervous a little bit. I was like, all right, I got to do it. I got to do it. And I undid my shirt like Superman, and you could see the Hillary for Prison shirt, and I jumped up and screamed right in a, a lull, like a little silence part. And I go, Hillary for Prison! And Trump's like, yeah, Hillary. And he's like pointing at me. So if you guys have that clip, we can show it really quick. Oh, oh we have the video clip of that? Yeah, yeah. I've oh, I didn't even know we had I that video clip. Nico. Yeah, I, mean, I just saw the stills on your Twitter, Rambo Beggs, where it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys, can you cue up the uh, clip? Did you get? Yeah. Okay, here is that clip. I don't even know about this. I should read the game here. Go ahead. <laughs> Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. Not he said Hillary for thank prison. You. He said, and he yeah. goes, thank you. <laughs> so I jumped up and had my shirt and opened it up and I go, Hillary for prison. And he just started smiling and looking at me and it started talking about Hillary. So I'm doing this whole. So while you're doing that, I've seen the photos on your Twitter this morning. We'll go to your site. That's why you're like Superman with your shirt, your jacket. Well, I did open. that again. But before, before he even came out and started speaking, this girl came up. She was a fan of the show. And she goes, I just love everything you guys at InfoWars do. You guys are just amazing. I don't think there's one more thing that y'all could do that would just make me just get any more excited about InfoWars. I was like, well, I might have something that you'd like. I have a Hillary for a Prison t-shirt on under, the, under my suit. And she goes, oh, no, you're just teasing me. You don't have that. I said, well, yeah, actually, I do. You can see the picture right there. So I opened up my shirt, and the entire crowd erupted. And you can see these different reporters or a uh, man get standing ovation for showing his Hillary for prison shirt. And it got to a point where I just ended up pulling the blazer off in the top and just had the shirt going. And see, anybody could have done what I love the fact you always come up with great ideas. You're always making the news. You're always making people, you know, uh, link into what we're doing. Great job, Joe. Well, I'm telling you, I probably told at least, this is probably, you know, nice, probably a thousand people what InfoWars was. I'm, I'm, I want to see the, the spike in the site last night because people were all on their phone. Where do I get that? I was like, you got to go to the InfoWars store, man. You're going to love it. Everyone's going to come up, approach you, engage in conversation, ask you why you feel this way. But uh, imagine if people weren't InfoWars, because I didn't tell you to do this. It was your idea. An individual could have gone out with some slogan or some point and been just as effective if they were motivated. That's the power of one person. Yeah. And I had at one point, I started doing this and I had everybody in the stadium. I'm talking like there's thousands and thousands of people screaming and just going crazy. Hillary, Hillary for prison, yeah! You know, like people love the shirt. So I think it's great. I'm glad we made it. And it gets a good point across that, hey, this And it did sell out, but we have more on the way. So it's basically not back order. That's why it doesn't say back ordered. We'll have more in a couple of days. Uh, so it should be able to get out to you by the end of the week or early next week if you order it. They have it in all sizes. It's a black T-shirt. It's Hillary for prison. 2016 on the front. Legalize freedom. Infowars.com on the back. Yeah, so one of the actual, he did get a one point across. He talks about how we're giving troops overseas, you know, our so-called uh, allies equipment. And then once they get shots fired at them, they freeze up, they run away, and then our equipment gets taken over by ISIS. So if we can get that clip ready, it says ISIS, U.S. Humvee. Yeah, I'll we'll go ahead and roll that clip. Here it is. That's why we are teleprompter internet free. <laughs> we're on these clips and we're trying to go through them here. You might want to tell them again, I guess, what clip it is. Yeah, it's the, uh, it says uh, number six. 
ISIS US Humvee. Joe made a nice little list for us and everything right there. So professional. <laughs> Maybe the computer locked up. Who knows? That's why we're going to put a whole well, other computer system so when it locks up like this, it, it's my fault. I didn't buy good enough equipment. Sorry, folks. Okay, we do have the clip now. Go ahead and go to it. Our military is going to be so strong and so powerful and so modern, the technology we have it, but it's not working. We're not allowed to use it. Nobody has any fear. Not that I want to use it. I want to make it so strong, so powerful that we never have to use it. We never have to use it. Well, you know, that's got the Pentagon. We selling send it. our <laughs> best equipment to our chicken allies, the people over there. One shot's fired in the air and they give it up to the enemy. And they have better stuff than we do. They have all the brand new stuff. The Humvees with the armor plates. 2,300 Humvees. 2,300. I thought I misread it. How could you have 2,300? They gave it to armor them. Armor plated the best. If our wounded warriors, who are the best people in the world, if our wounded warriors, if our wounded warriors were in those Humvees, they wouldn't have lost their arms and their legs and had such a tough life. Actually, yeah, they These would the because that's why people. they did lose them because they had bad Humvees. So we're going to make <laughs> our military so strong and so powerful and so great and the world is going to respect us again. And we're going to take care of our vets because our vets are treated like third class citizens. If he gets elected and doesn't deliver all this, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, because like I said, he's the kind of guy right now, he's bringing a whole lot of problems to the table without any solutions. And as a presidential candidate, that's what I want to see. I want to see a man who comes up, he understands the problems with the country, but then he gives you a solution, a plan that what he, that's something that he's going to work towards. And I don't see that with him whatsoever. Well, he's promising stuff, but it's all total slogans with no details. Yeah. And the truth is, they cashed those Humvees over there and gave them to ISIS, who works for the globalists. And the military commanders have even come out and said that. Yeah. They've been ordered to help them, ordered to help Al-Qaeda, now ISIS. That's the truth. And Donald Trump has said that, remember, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. He said it looks like Obama's aiding ISIS. Yeah. He knows all that. I mean, that's the big scandal. All right, Joe Biggs, great job. You'll be back on the Nightly News uh, tonight, breaking down more of the Donald. We got a bunch of other clips we didn't get to. Great job. Thank you. All right, uh, again, he'll be on the Nightly News tonight, or maybe even with David Knight coming up in the fourth hour. I forget all this new stuff we're doing, uh, but uh, this info war is going to be so big, so huge, so wonderful. No one's going to want to attack us, quote Donald Trump. Watch us tomorrow. <laughs> we'll be back. I'm going to take some calls from folks that have been holding, like Mark uh, and others. Stay with us. Well, it's the final segment of the big three-hour transmission, but a fourth hour that a lot of stations are tuning into now. The fourth hour, Overdrive, kind of a wrap-up of the show, but also all the new breaking news or news we didn't get to and special guests and more. David Knight's going to be hosting. I'll have a guest in here with him as well. Fourth hour, I want to thank all of our affiliates for carrying it. Speaking of getting better TV equipment, we got some pretty good equipment, but I need to get a little bit more. And satellite uplinks and closed captioning, 10 grand a month and all the rest of it. We're going to try to raise a million dollars tomorrow. That sounds like a lot to an average person making 50 grand a year. When you try to set up a TV studio and a radio studio and try to have six, seven, eight reporters, six, seven, eight writers, all the support staff, all the crew, customer service, all of it, it takes, I don't even want to tell people how much it takes to run this year because it'll sound like some huge number. It's actually a very small number compared to media operations, much smaller. But I guess I should just go ahead and tell everybody how much it costs to run this place every year. $15 million. So see, that's how big the show is is that it can bring in the money to pay for this. We have 50-plus crew members. We have correspondents that are full-time, 12 hours a day in London. Okay, we've got them in other cities. And I want to be able to hire more correspondents, more writers. But, but, but this million dollars is just to have enough to be able to get two or three more reporters and two or three more writers. And maybe a another camera person, and be able to pay for the satellite and for the closed captioning. So it sounds like a lot of money. It's not when we have tens of millions of viewers and listeners go to InfoWars Money Bomb, InfoWars forward slash Money Bomb, and donate right there. Normally, we would be the whole month before Money Bomb saying, if you want to donate early, you can. I haven't really been doing that. Uh, you can see the video, breaking it down and more there at uh, InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb. But tomorrow, I'll have a free video feed there. It's, it's going to be a 28-hour transmission. Let's go to Mark in California. Thanks for holding. You're on the air. 
Doug Millar is uh, one of the few real heroes that we have, and I, I actually have his information if you wanted to interview him. He's uh, worked with Ted Gunderson.